Hey, you're about to watch a message that has been recorded live at Grace Family Church, South Africa. At Grace, we say, come as you are. And our mission is to love God, love people, and make a difference. And wherever you're watching this from today, uh, we hope that you're encouraged by the message that you're about to watch up next. When you live amongst mountains of uncertainty, when you live through the valleys of loss and disappointment, when all you can mutter is, I can't do this. This fear, this debt, this loneliness, this pandemic, this is harm. But you were not meant to do this alone. These mountains will not defeat you. This is hard, but we can do hard things. A few weeks ago, we were just arriving at the school gate when my son suddenly realized he'd left his cap at home. Mom, I'm not allowed to play outside. I'd break if I don't have my cap. And it was too late to go home and fetch it and shame. This little guy was just gutted. I mean, let's be honest. When you're nine years old, break is like the only part of school that's fun. So to not be able to go outside for break is just end of days. So he was so upset. And as we pulled over, I turned to him and I said, my boy, this is hard, but you can do hard things. I've seen you climb ropes and jump over walls and you know how to overcome obstacles. This is your obstacle today. You have to overcome the frustration and the disappointment that you won't get to go outside at break but that's what you do. You overcome obstacles. This is hard, but you can do hard things. This is hard. When we look at the season of life that we're in, when we press pause and take stock that it's a year since our lockdown started and the pandemic hit, we have to acknowledge this is difficult. We've got to say it out, out, out loud, we've got to label the situation because glossing over it and pretending that it's not so bad is not going to help us in any way. Research shows that to name it is to tame it. And when we label and identify a situation, it immediately just calms our brains down. And I experienced this with Will in the car that day. And that's what we're talking about today. Living through this pandemic is tough, making it to the end of the month is hard. Keeping our relationships going and, and, and thriving is difficult, but we can do hard things. In fact, in one of the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to the early church community that was very similar to our community is, he said this, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. This is hard, but we can do hard things through Christ who gives us strength. And so, for the next four weeks, we're going to look at practical ways that Jesus helps us to overcome obstacles. We are going to look at four really challenging areas of life that most of us are exposed to right now. For the next four weeks, we're going to be taking a deep dive into uncertainty, disappointment, loss, and relationships, and explore how Jesus helps us to do life well despite these difficulties. Now recently I was reading about a study where research participants were told they had a 50% chance of getting an electric shock and they felt far more anxious and agitated than the participants who knew they were definitely going to get an electric shock. Isn't it funny how anticipating something is more traumatic than knowing something is going to happen. Research shows that job uncertainty, for example, actually takes a more significant toll on our health than losing the job itself. So waiting to find out if you're going to lose your job is more stressful than losing your job. 
Us humans, we crave information about the future in the same way we crave food and sex and other primary human rewards. Our brains perceive ambiguity or, or not knowing as a threat. And then our brain will try and protect us by diminishing our ability to focus on anything else other than creating certainty. And that's what I want to talk about today is uncertainty. With research like this, it's no surprise that there are entire industries devoted into filling in the blanks of our futures. We have planning apps and tracking apps and diaries and virtual calendars that we check again and again. We see astrology and palm reading and birth chart mapping and there are futurists who study and predict trends and people spend thousands on strategic planning consultants. Fundamental religions offer absolute truth and predictions of what's going to happen in the world and conspiracy theories give us simple explanations for complex issues. All of these have completely thrived and, and taken off in lockdown because of uncertainty. I mean, I don't know about you, but how many of you have planned an event or a holiday and you're checking the weather like three weeks ahead of the actual day, hoping you will be able to figure out what's going to happen? <laughs> With so much uncertainty around, it's not surprising that we are trying to figure out what is going to happen. How will we thrive? And so it's normal, it's even common for us to be uncomfortable with uncertainty. We prefer to know the restaurant we're going to because we like to know the meal we eat is going to be one we enjoy. We want to know who's going to be there before we arrive at a party or a function. And most of us would rather our boss tell us exactly what he thinks about our work performance. We crave certainty, but the thing is, it is impossible to get rid of all the uncertainty in our lives. And so we find ourselves here today. What do we do with uncertainty? Uncertainty is hard, but what, what's the antidote? How, do, how can we do this? The mathematician John Allen Polis, he says, uncertainty is the only certainty there is. Knowing how to live with insecurity is the only security. You know, accept uncertainty. Live with insecurity. Jess, are you mad? Like, do you know how hard that is? Yes, I do. This is hard. But remember, we can do hard things. And never mind what John Allen Paulus is telling us, to do with uncertainty, what does Jesus tell us to do? So let's go and find out. In John 13, Jesus is having supper with his friends. And this is not just any meal, it's the Passover meal, much like the communion that we take in worship, where Jesus has told his disciples, his friends, that his body will be broken like the bread and his blood will be shed like wine. And that all of this is going to be kicked off when someone betrays him. So picture Jesus sitting around the dinner table with his friends and he says, hey guys, one of you is going to betray me and I'm going to die. This is a major shock to them. Things are not supposed to go this way. Jesus had just come riding into the city of Jerusalem triumphantly and he, he was being welcomed like a king. In fact, they were actually expecting him to be the next king, not dead. <laughs> Anyone else faced some major changes in their plans this last year? Something has just changed and it's not supposed to be this way. So we pick the story up in John 13 verse 36 and Jesus has just revealed that not only will he be betrayed by one of his friends, but he's going to leave all of them and they cannot come with him. So in John 13 verse 36, Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you'll follow me later. Why can't I come with you now, Lord? He asked, I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me. I'll tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. Side note, 
Sometimes when we ask God what is going to happen and he tells us we might not like what we hear. Okay, but here's the main part. This is what Jesus says. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip, another one of Jesus' disciples, says, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Can you feel how these guys are just hunting for certainty? They're like, okay, Jesus, but, but what about this? But what about this? Can you make it clearer? Can you make it clearer? And Jesus replies, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but the Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. For me, the standout in this verse is this beautiful assurance from Jesus. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Now, understandably, the disciples have been thrown by this unexpected turn in events. They, they're uncertain and they have questions and they have worries and they're trying to piece it all together and they're confused and they're caught off guard. And, and what does Jesus offer them? What is Jesus' response to our uncertainty? He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me. Now, I'm going to stop here briefly because there are two things I want to look at. The don't let your hearts be troubled and the trust in Jesus. And, and here is a one way to deal with uncertainty. One way to deal with uncertainty, Jesus says, is don't let your hearts be troubled. In other words, don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think. This has been possibly one of the most basic, essential stress reduction tactics that anyone has ever told me. Don't believe everything you think. I recently um, was talking to a friend of mine who had found a lump and needed a biopsy, a very scary, uncertain experience. And she reached out to me and was like saying, I'm trying not to freak out in those three days between getting the biopsy and getting the results. And I said to her, friend, stay in the present. Don't go and live in the what if and the maybe. Just stay here and now with the actual facts. Don't believe everything you think. And even when it feels like everything is out of our control, we can still control what we pay attention to. When Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled, he might be saying, turn off the alerts on your social media. <laughs> don't pay attention to everything you think from hijacking your awareness of the present moment. And so the first thing to do with uncertainty is do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is about choice, what gets your attention and your presence. You know, I don't know what your fears are, what your personal circumstances are, and, but we have an option, an invitation from Jesus that instead of worrying about the uncontrollable, we focus on the aspects that are in our control. And sometimes, of course, all circumstances are different. Sometimes the only thing we can control is our attitude and our attention. So the first thing to do with uncertainty, don't believe everything you think. 
choose what you pay attention to in difficult times. Okay, so that was like a little side note. The main thing we're going to do is this second point that Jesus talks about. This is where we're going to spend our time. What do we do with uncertainty? Jesus says, trust in God. Trust in Jesus. The opposite of uncertainty is not certainty. The opposite of uncertainty is trust. To understand what Jesus means here, I want to take us back to this ancient proverb, this verse in the book of Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When we're facing uncertainty, Jesus says trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And what I have discovered is this. There is a difference between trusting God and trusting my understanding of God. St. Augustine said, if you understand it, it is not God. You see, I can say, I can say, I don't understand this. I do not get this and still trust God. I can say, you know what? I'm going to trust in the Lord, but my understanding of the situation, I don't trust that. I am willing to doubt that. And honestly, a lot of the time, our understanding of God is what we're putting our trust in rather than the truth that God is bigger than we could ever understand. And so to embrace uncertainty is to say, I don't actually understand. I don't know. I recognize this is really hard for a lot of us because we long for certainty and predictability and clarity. And a lot of us actually work really hard for those things in our life. But <laughs> it is so wonderful to realize that when I don't understand why, when I can't find the right words, when life or when even God doesn't make sense, that's okay. Not knowing is okay. My prayer for us is that we would make friends with uncertainty, that we would embrace doubt and make it a close friend rather than an enemy. You see, our understanding is limited, but God is not limited by our understanding. My capacity for certainty is limited, but God is certainly not limited by my capacity. And what a relief to know that I am not supposed to have all the answers and solutions. That is what it means to embrace uncertainty. And this is what Jesus is asking his disciples to do in response to their questions, their, their, their not knowing, their, their lack of understanding about what is going on. He says, don't trust your understanding of the situation. Trust me. Now, why on earth would anyone embrace a scary, hard thing like uncertainty? And so for the remainder of our time together, I just want to give you three wonderful reasons to make friends with uncertainty. Three amazing things that uncertainty can bring into your life when your life is hard. Uncertainty brings freedom, it brings humility, and it brings love. So the first one, uncertainty brings freedom. You know, many of the thought patterns or the life situations or the relationship problems that we get stuck in occur when we believe the solution lies with us understanding and fixing things. Doubting our understanding sets us free from having all the answers. Why did my dad die, someone might ask, of COVID while my boss survived? I don't know, but God knows. Doubting our understanding sets us free from anxiety of being in control. Oh no, when, am, when will I get the vaccine? I don't know, but God knows. Doubting our understanding sets us free from worrying about our futures. How will I ever get financially secure again? I don't know, but God knows. Now that is freedom. What a burden 
to let go of, to find release from. That God reminds us through the prophet Isaiah, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, my, my ways are beyond your ways and my thoughts are beyond your thoughts. And so when we say, I don't think I understand what God is doing here, when we embrace uncertainty, we are not only acknowledging our limitations, which for some of us who put a lot of pressure on ourselves, that can be very liberating. We are not only acknowledging our own limitations, but we are also acknowledging that there are answers we haven't yet discovered, that there are solutions we cannot yet see, and there are ways and plans that our perspective has not been open to. <laughs> what a relief, how freeing. Embracing uncertainty means finding freedom. Uncertainty also brings us humility. You see, here's the thing. When we confidently assume that we've got it all sorted, that we're in control and we understand what is going on, we can so easily become arrogant and goal-orientated at the expense of other people. Doubting or, or confusion, not knowing, if we allow it, it can be like an x-ray of our souls. Uncertainty can actually expose the little vanity projects in our egos. Doubt can mess up our desire to just be right all the time. And you know what? Often, our desire to be right is what's messing up our relationships with each other. And so humility can be a huge help to us. For me, I like to use words to name life and tame life, to make sense of everything. And, and I've discovered that when I embrace doubt and when I say I don't get it, I don't understand, it leads me into a place where God is the answer. And I don't know about you, but I would really much rather rely on a God that I don't fully understand than on all my statements of absolute uncertainty. I actually love this conversation that we read between Jesus and Thomas in John 14. Thomas says to Jesus, and I would imagine quite indignantly when Jesus says, you know where we're going? He says, no, we have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Friends, when it comes to uncertainty, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. That's humility. That's the gift of not knowing. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. That gets us through hard times. Now, maybe this feels like dangerous territory, like a slippery slope, like we're not living in confidence and faith and, and, and we don't want to live in insecurity and in weakness. But Learning to be humble so often deals with our insecurity issues because it trains us to trust God. Uncertainty trains us to trust. It makes me let go of all my knowledge and togetherness and plans and solutions, the what stuff. And in place of that, to find the presence of God and an encounter with God's voice, the, the who stuff of life. <laughs> And so when we trust in God, we have a grace-given confidence, not an accomplishment-based confidence. When we trust in God, we are unattached to what the world thinks about us because we are confident in what God thinks about us. And so I want to encourage you to embrace doubt in a way that brings humility, where you can doubt your words without doubting the word of God. Humility is a very safe and powerful space to, to live from. And so letting go of our ego's need for control and certainty can lead us to humility, where it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And then finally, and this is my favorite thing that embracing uncertainty has brought into my life. The third thing that uncertainty brings us is it leads us deeper into love. Uncertainty leads us deeper into love. Now in 1 Corinthians 12, 
Paul is speaking about a church community and he's talking about all the talents and abilities and gifts that they have. He talks about healing and teaching and prophecy and service and how a community, a, a church could work efficiently and, and, and healthily. And then at the bottom of this chapter, after talking up all these functions and doing, he just busts out this massive statement in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31. And he says to them, I will show you the most excellent way to live. It's a bold claim. I will show you the most excellent way to live. And then what follows is the famous 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. The most excellent way to live in easy times and in hard times is love. Not knowledge, not understanding, not preaching and teaching and worship and singing. Love. The author Brian McLaren says in 1 Corinthians 13, we see that nearly everything that religious people strive for will eventually be swallowed up into something deeper and is of no real worth. Even faith and hope don't have the last word. Only love is the more excellent way. I know, I know we want faith in times of uncertainty. I know we want hope in times of uncertainty, but even they cannot carry us as far as love can. So how do we embrace uncertainty in a way that leads us deeper into love? Well, as we wrap things up, when we don't know fully, we usually become more concerned with practical, loving behavior. Ultimately, if we can let go of needing answers and explanations of reason and control and logic, and actually we simply just don't know what to do, so often it just leaves us with love. A few weeks ago, I went to visit my sister in Cape Town and she had just moved house. Um, she's pregnant and she was just really struggling and in physical pain and going through a hard time with all these life changes and I actually just didn't know what to say. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to say and so I cleaned out her fridge. <laughs> I just helped her organize her, her kitchen after she moved. She shared her worries about her health and motherhood and she wasn't like sure and I don't know what's going to happen and so I just organized her pantry. We found some turmeric from 2013 in there and we threw that in the bin. But you know what? Not knowing, and how's this for life goals? Not needing to know, <laughs> often leads us deeper into compassion because there's just actually nothing left to do. And so when you're sitting opposite someone who is in confusion or struggle or asking questions, don't give answers, give love. Not knowing. Uncertainty is like a sieve that sorts out the ego, the pride, the control issues. It, it, it holds back our effectiveness and our correctness and all that is left for us to do is love. Life is hard, but we can do hard things. And so when you're faced with uncertainty, here are four things, and it has the acronym LIFE, because life is hard. You can do these four things when you're faced with uncertainty. The first one is label. Label the situation. Give it a name. Name your emotions. Tell yourself, this is hard. The second thing is identify what you have control over and what you don't. And literally take a list, write it down. What do I have control over? What I do not have control over? And sometimes you might find the only thing you have control over is your attitude and your response. Own that. It's a choice. Don't believe everything you think. Interrogate what is true and what is a lie. The third thing, F, focus on Jesus. Remember, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know that gets you through tough times. And then finally, the E, embrace love. Don't give answers. 
Don't spend too much time in your head trying to explain everything and rationalize everything. Give love. Stop talking and start doing. Show compassion, not knowledge, not expertise. And I believe that even though life is hard, uncertainty is hard, we can do hard things through Christ who strengthens us. Let's pray. Jesus, as we listen in on this conversation that you had with your, with your friends, we want to hear you speak to us. And so we receive those words right now. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Help us, Jesus, to not believe everything we think. Help us to embrace trusting you instead of our own understanding. And I know that as we do these two things, you will lead us through the challenges, through the difficulty of life, through the uncertainty, because it's not about what we know, it's about who you know. And God, we know you. You are good, you are faithful, and you are loving. And I pray that each person hearing this is reminded of those truths above every other lie they might be living in right now. We thank you, God, that you are faithful and that you are greater than anything we might be facing. In Jesus' name, amen.